The Shoshone tribe had a name for the Great Salt Lake, Titisipa, which translates to bad water. And really, they weren't wrong. The lake is one of the very saltiest on the whole planet. It is nearly 10 times saltier than the water in the ocean, making it undrinkable and nearly void of aquatic life. And while it might be true that this ecosystem isn't booming with aquatic biodiversity, there is in fact one species that absolutely thrives here. Brine Shrimp I recently did some research on these amazing little creatures, which then inspired me to take a trip out to the Great Salt Lake to see them for myself. really shows you how much salt is in this lake so there's a little puddle right here that is now evaporated and that's the salt content that was left behind which is a lot. While the name shrimp might make you think of something that looks like this, brine shrimp have a much different appearance to the table shrimp that you and I are used to eating. Also size wise, brine shrimp typically only grow to be about a half an inch long. Females can easily be identified by the cluster of eggs fastened to their body. Approximately every four days, a female will lay around 300 eggs, making these creatures extremely fertile. These eggs, or cysts, are so small that about 50 could be placed on the head of a pin. Brine shrimp feed primarily on the algae and phytoplankton within the salty waters of the Great Salt Lake. With brine shrimp being one of the only aquatic organisms to inhabit the lake, this food source is relatively easy to come by for the species as a whole. As winter approaches, the lake temperatures drop. This triggers a fundamental process in the brine shrimp life cycle. As they sense the water temperatures decrease, females will lay their eggs knowing that as adults they will soon die. Eventually all of the adults in the entire ecosystem will follow this pattern, dying and leaving behind millions and millions of eggs. These eggs will form into giant clouds that can be easily seen from planes flying over the lake. If you have ever noticed that the Great Salt Lake takes on a strange pea green color in the winter time, this is because of the algaes and phytoplanktons that are now bursting with life, being unchallenged by the millions of adult brine shrimp that were previously feeding on them. While you may have never heard of it, there is actually a major industry that revolves around the harvest of brine shrimp at the Great Salt Lake, but not in the way that you may think. You see, brine shrimp are much too small for humans to eat or find any nutritional value. However, their eggs make perfect feed for the shrimp that we do eat. The majority of the shrimp that we eat nowadays comes from shrimp farms from across the world. These shrimp are natural predators and do significantly better feeding on living organisms like brine shrimp cysts rather than manufactured pellets. So while there isn't a harvest for brine shrimp for human consumption, there is a major harvest for the cysts to be collected and given to shrimp that we will then eat. So in a way we do eat brine shrimp, just not directly. On the other hand, there are some species that do thrive on the brine shrimp, such as the eared grebe. Each year, half of the North American population of eared grebes come to feed at the Great Salt Lake. This is four to five million eared grebes, each one feeding on about 35,000 brine shrimp each day. My trip to the Great Salt Lake today was right at the tail end of the life cycle of adult brine shrimp. You can see on the shore here that there are literally millions of brine shrimp who have already laid their eggs and reproduced and have continued that next generation. Please subscribe for more content of Utah wildlife and we'll see you on the next one.